Welcome to Caneville United Methodist Church. It is our mission to bring glory to God and to impact lives through worship, sharing, service, and prayer. Wherever you find yourself connecting with our church, it is our prayer that you will find the risen Christ here. God is alive in our hearts and in our actions. Please join me for the call of worship found in your bulletins. Christ has risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and to those in the tombs restoring life. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and to those in the tombs restoring life. Hallelujah, the risen Christ is with us. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Our first hymn this morning will be led by a video presentation written and produced by Reverend Rich and used at the annual conference last November. We are, are we yet alive is the song. You can find the words to the hymn in the bulletin insert. But uh, hopefully uh, we can all kind of get into it and at least sing them for us, okay? And if you want to clap them all, you can clap them all. Are we yet alive to the of faith, so I invite you all to stand, even you at home that are watching this video, uh, please stand where you are, and uh, we're going to say the affirmation of faith as from the Apostles' Creed. Jim, if you turn with me. Let us say together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The first reading this morning is from Acts, but first let us prepare our hearts. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, may we hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Now the whole group of those who believed were with one heart and soul. And no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and the great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and bought the proceeds of what they sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Today's reading is from John 20, verses 19 through 23. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands inside. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thank you, Speaker. I'm going to come down here and be a little closer, a little more intimate this season as we we share our love for Jesus Christ with one another and through the scripture. This season I want to talk about uh, being blessed beyond measure and I've got something here we recognize, a yardstick. Do you all have a yardstick at home? I don't think our millennials would have a yardstick, but I know that all of us who who do any kind of sewing at all in the past may have one. You may have one with a a name of a business on it because these used to be handed out quite often by businesses, and uh, this one does not. Um, But I notice there's measurements. There's inches on one side, and on the other side there's inches and um, and centimeters, meters, inches also with... uh, with the, the markings of the yard. And of course, a yard is three feet, you know, so we have a three foot long yardstick. Might not know that. Kids probably would like to twirl it. 
Um, but we're talking about measurements, and, and one thing that we, we learn about measuring is that we like to do it. Even as we read through the Bible, there are so many places where they're measuring um, things, one thing to the next to the next. You know, they're, they're measuring either the temple or they're measuring the distance between one thing and another. There's lots of measuring. And we like to, to measure um, our progress in life, too, do we not? And that's why one of the things we have um, as a gift, I left mine up here, that I gave you last week, and there are a few more at the, at the greeter station, is, is a little ruler um, f- for being blessed beyond measure. It's only five inches, you know, and it's like, what can we do with five inches? Well, you can still count. You can still count how many weeks you are a part of um, our service in a row. And I'd like us to start thinking about how we can be a part of this, watching the video or being here in person for five weeks straight. Now you were here last week, which is cool. So you can count that as one. And we're going to go on to two. Now last week we did have a blessing last week. And last week's blessing was the resurrection of Jesus and, and that Jesus is alive. And that we celebrate that because our God's not dead. He's really alive. He's really a part of this world, even though some don't have um, a, a personal relationship with him. And I invite us to take that time to make that personal relationship with Jesus because he is there for us in spirit. And especially during these 40 days of uh, appearances, of Jesus' appearances. So each week we're going to read um, as traditional uh, uh, a story from Acts of the Apostles and uh, a resurrection appearance. And we're also going to get into this, what does it mean for us to be blessed beyond measure? And there's no greater um, passage that I found in the Bible other than the Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, the whole thing, to take us to this next phase of what we're doing. So I want to read for you um, Ephesians three fourteen through 21, and we'll read that every week and have it pretty much memorized by the end of the the five weeks. So here it goes for Ephesians. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with the power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. And I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth, again measuring there, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Now to him who has the power to work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be the glory in the church and in Jesus Christ to all generations forever and ever. We get to that abundance, and we wonder what what is that, and has it ever appeared? Is it only when Jesus rose from the dead? And it's not, because this whole abundance beyond measure was even in our Old Testament as Joseph received grain from the fields. Of course, he started measuring um, he, as you do when your grain comes in, you measure it and you make sure that you've got enough and what you start calculating what your, your um, income is going to be because you're counting on that. And as the grain came in for Joseph, of course, he was trying to um, amass enough that he could go through the, the coming famine. Um, it got to a point where it, it, and he talks about it, and i give you the verse, Uh, Genesis 41, verse 49, that he stopped measuring because it was beyond measure. It was more than all, I can see overflowing grain. I can can see having to put up more um, grain pits so that, um, have you ever had one of those years that you had so much grain that you had to just make a, a spot on the ground and, and, and make a big pile instead of all of it fitting in your green bin. Wouldn't that be wonderful? But I want to talk about how God's blessings get to that point. So first we start measuring, as Joseph start measuring, and we start measuring, um, and we find out in the Bible that there's, there's two weights. 
there's an honest weight and a deceptive weight. So we want to we want to be the honest weight. So one of the things in the honest weight is is they use cubits, right? So in the Bible they they had a cubit. And what 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 is a cubit? Well, a cubit is the distance between your elbow and the top of your finger in an adult. Now, if we would measure that distance in my arm, it turns out to be 18 inches. I'm an average size person. But if a very large person might have a 21 inch uh, distance between the top of their finger. So there's a large cubit and a small cubit. And we want to use the honest one, which is the average of 18 inches. So that's what was used, an honest weight. But it talks about the honest measurement and the dishonest measurement all the time in the Bible, in the Old Testament, advising us to take that honest measurement. Now, you might be turning over a new leaf here. Here it is, spring, and you're thinking, okay, I need to get out and get some activity going, lose a few pounds. I'm there myself. I want to work on a new diet. And as I try to, to do that, I've got to be honest with myself, take measurements every day. How much food did I eat? How much exercise did I get? And we're going through these measurements, but we have to be honest with ourselves. If we want to get to the goal, we have to be honest. We can't cheat. I mean, we, we really, we, we can give ourselves grace every once in a while, but we're going to be honest if we're going to get to our goal, or we'll never get there, right? And same is true for our faith. If we are honest by measuring our faith every week for the next four weeks, if we get to the week five and we see that our faith is going to be changed, just like it was over, over the Lenten season, now, we did a few things over the Lenten, Lenten season to measure, um, that we can measure in our progress. We can remember some of the things we did. We can remember the five-finger prayer. We can remember the, the exercise prayer that prayed to God above and God below. And as we, we try to do some exercising now, we may recreate that. We can remember the breath prayer. We can remember the walking prayer. So as we remember some of these things we did in Lent, let's continue to do them in this Easter season, knowing that we have measured out a, a, a good measurement, a cubit, a good measure. So as we move into our, our reading today from Ephesians, we're just going to use the two verses, and I've printed them in your bulletins there so that you can, you know, keep track of which ones we're talking about. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. That's your first gift. That's your first blessing. Oh my gosh. Well, second blessing. Your first blessing is Jesus. Second blessing is that you're part of this family. But families have changed now. I understand that there is a, a movement to change the, the definition of family to being only biological. How that would dramatically change society because it's not just biological. What about adopted family members? Are they now excluded? What about families that look nothing like the traditional family? Like a mom and a few kids or just two parents? What about the non-traditional? Do they get to be a family? When my dad um, was alive and we were kids, and, and we'd be you know, in and out of the household in our teenage years, he liked it when he sat at, at, at the window at the head of the table, and mom sat at the other side of the table, and then all four of us girls, two sat on each side. And my dad would always comment, this is a full table. This is my, this is family. And I'm thinking, well, you know, if, if one of us brings home a date, you know, is that family too? Can we include him? If one of us can't be there, is, is it okay just to have three kids and mom and dad? And what happens when it's just you and mom? Is that family? Every time at a wedding, when, when I do a wedding, and I, I did one a few weeks ago, I, I asked the couple ahead of time how they want to be introduced 
and it's always different. Some have the Mr. and Mrs., some, some just do their names, some has, let's, let's put her name before his name, you know, and so it's all different. But when I turn them around after the kiss, and I turn them around and face the congregation, I always say, let me introduce to you this new family. Because even though they haven't had children yet, or even though their blended children haven't quite got the idea of being family together, they, in a marriage, you are creating a new family. And you go forward with that. So even if it's just a couple around the table, even if the, the, the one spouse is now in heaven and it's just the, the one single person and the, the kids are all in different places, there's still a sense of family in their life because they have the church. Now, how did Jesus do this? Remember how he was teaching his disciples and they were all gathered around. Mom and brother came over to speak to him and the, the disciples said, hey, your, your family's here. And he said, who is my family? My family is, are you guys, my brothers and sisters? And so when he, in his um, resurrection appearance, comes into the household with the doors, that the doors are locked, he's coming back to family. And these brothers and sisters in, in, in faith are, are huddled together because they've lost one of their own. And that's what we do. When someone has passed, we gather the family around, and you know what? That family doesn't look just like the biological family, no. This is, this is the close friends that have been there. This is the, the, not only the adopted, but the, 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 um, the neighbor kid that was also a part of the family growing up. Here is the family gathered in that upper room with the door locked because of their fear that they were gonna come uh, be arrested. And here it is, Jesus comes into that family. And what does he say? Peace be with you. And he answers all their questions about the, the physiology of his, his hands and his feet. And then, he, and, and then he breathes on them and says, you know, receive the Holy Spirit. He, he gives them something. Isn't that the way families are? Families come in in peace, and they, they answer any of the questions, clear things up, and they, they share something, usually food, <laughs> maybe good news, maybe a pat on the back, maybe an attaboy or an girl. And then when Jesus finishes here, as we read in, in John, the um, the 23rd verse, and, and I was going to cut this piece out, and then I realized how not only did the, my Bible translation have it right when it put it in the paragraph, it is really important, 23, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. And I think about that in context of family, and as Jesus said that, it, it makes it so important that that's what happens in our midst, that there is forgiveness, that we make it okay that one, that a, a distant family member comes back and even though they haven't written, they haven't called, they haven't texted, they haven't video chatted us, it's, it's okay because they're family. As we consider who our family is, there's a lot of brokenness still out there that we have to fix. And if it can't be fixed, if it's not broken, it's not family. If it's broken, it's not family. Of course, I come from some brokenness in my own family. We know that. But we created a new family when we decided that that brokenness ha was never going to heal. And so we became a family again. You have become family in so many ways. And you have family here so that when we're gathered here, and it's okay that it's, it's on video for some and it's in person for some. This is still family, and we want to continue to reach out and touch one another in the ways that we can, which is through the Holy Spirit. We are family. So our first gift is being family. When Jesus was doing his ministry, the, pe the crowds of people said that they were awed beyond measure. 
they were just so excited about what the Lord was doing that they were beyond, they could not measure how many miracles he did, how many people he healed, how many people he touched, and we all want to be at that place. We try to measure it, and I've, I've heard this before. They me we measure against the tool, that, and it's not a yardstick. <clears throat> it's, it's number of bodies in the pews, and in one congregation, they told me how um, when the congregation was at its fullest, they had to put chairs in the aisles. Did that ever happen here? I'm looking at the ones who have been here the longest. Chairs in the back, you know, and it seemed like standing room only. And so you would count how many people, and the numbers were just like, wow. It was beyond measure. I couldn't count them all. <laughs> the ushers would never get it right because there was too many heads. And they were all moving around. We want to count it like that, but we can't. And so I suggest that we, can't, we, we let it be beyond measure. And as we, we do this hybrid worship thing, it, it has so become difficult to measure. And we, try, we have to do statistics every year, and they've now given us two lines. Here's the line for the in-person and the line for how many people online. And it's so hard to, to judge. I don't want to measure something that's beyond measurement. And the way that the Holy Spirit works is a beyond measure kind of thing. Because as it says in Ephesians 4, which is where we're going, um, each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift, which means a beyond measurement. As it said in Mark, they were astounded beyond measure. This is all beyond measure. But we can start, as Joseph started measuring his, we got one, the, the Christ is alive, and now we got two, that we have family. And this is the second blessing. So I thank you for, for going with me on this, and if you need one of those little measuring tools just to keep you going and work on your Bible verses, um, put that in your Bible and keep measuring how far you've come and then soon you'll see that you're way beyond measuring how much you love the Lord and how alive he is in your life. Will you pray with me? Holy and loving God, we know that this is, the scripture is true, that we are family, and that you love us beyond any kind of measurement. Help us to know that love in the family and help us to, to share that love with others so that they can become family too. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Every generous gift is a thoughtful sacrifice, and for Christians, an act of confession to their belief in Christ and his ongoing work in the church. Because of Jesus' resurrection from the dead, we are willing to make this sacrifice. Let us pray together. Holy God, we give ourselves captive and free, shaped by forces beyond our control, yet open to the power of your spirit through us and our gifts May others know that when we others are in Christ, there is a new creation. And that the old ways end and the new way life begins for everyone. Amen. Our closing hymn is Because He Lives. You may find it in the bulletin. It's uh, song 364.
seated for a minute as we we look at our announcements and so there's there's a few things going on and um, of course we are always having our weekly things that are going on this week we have praise team praise band rehearsing on a Wednesday at, at, at 7 so be sure it's it's kind of difficult because our choir members are getting confused so it's every other week, and we skip this week with choir. So, um, so this week, coming week is praise band, and then on the third week we'll do pra um, choir. I got that right. Yes. Okay, <laughs> I got that right. Um, but we're also having our are still doing our Zoom prayer. If if you feel like you want to be part of that, um, we certainly will, would send you the links. Um, I'm not just throwing them out there. It's been pretty consistent with three of us that have been on the Zoom prayer and uh, we, we talk about concerns and then we um, we pray for 10 minutes um, silently and then we do our Lord's Prayer together. It's pretty simple. I guess there's four of us on there. So we just wanna invite you if you'd like to be a part of that. Um, and then Saturday there is a men's group that meets here at the church at seven o'clock and Jim, that's open, right? That if any other men wanna join, um, it's a good place to um, be with some strong men of faith that uh, seriously take um, the scriptures to heart. Uh, so that's a good part, a good thing that we have in this church for men. Well, then next Saturday, we on the 17th, we are also going to do cleanup. I know you've been doing some around your, your own place, and here we need to have um, some hands together to... Um, to do some moving of things that have fallen out of the trees and to maybe uh, clean up some of the um, the garden so that we can have worship out there as coming up in May. <laughs>